Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere, and there's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of appreciation to Abraham Mohammed, Adam, Adrian Quintana, Alistair Main, Billy Hyvolt, Blue Ridge Ranger, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Chow Young Cat, Dank, Dave Rackier Gafford, David Wayne Foster, Daz Studio 68, Edwin Johnson, Erwin Jennisons, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin, Henrik 86, Jeronism, Joshua Balsimo, Kirsten Smith, Liam Nedrick, Life is Short, Matt, Missouri Bear, Nagara, Nathan Thompson, Nye Bai, Katar Craig, Rene, Rob H, Sally Ballis, Silver Umbrella, Skeptic936, Texas Mike, The Real Gabster, Tina Baker, Tom Hawkins, UK Diamond 33, and Windrider. So, massive shout out of appreciation to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now we are joined by a whole bunch of people in both Discord and G Plus panel, so I'll raise the mic on them and you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for the next live show. Yeah, I love when that's asserted to be evidence that water is curving around a ball when the very ball itself doesn't even have any curvature or geometric physical horizon. It's all so sad. Yep. So is this the end of the show? No. The end of the globe? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the end of the show for the globe, yeah. Are you gonna, <laughs> the show going to stop now? No, of course not. There's always going to be fundamentalist religious zealots that believe the Earth is a sphere. I mean, it it took a little while, guys, i got to say. I mean, about 5,000 years, uh, you finally did it. I not, just not, say, I just not really. Say that we, we've been telling you guys for a while. After 5,000 years, you guys have done it. Incredible it's only work. taken you guys this long to realize it. That's why you're arguing for an apparent horizon now? Redundant? Well, I mean, I don't those, know are, what those are scientific all, all of a sudden, terms, so All of a sudden, you guys figured out that your horizon is not in the right place. I mean, those are our terms. Not your what terms. What fucking terms? Your terms? <laughs> what terms are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> We're being globe, sued, guys. The globe created those terms, right? The globe sign. Oh, what? What globe? The terms and conditions. The contract. Yeah, you can make up anything in the thought experiment. Sure. So, who, who did the measurement on that, on that faithful day that you guys killed the globe? Globe has to actually exist in order to die, so it just has to die in the minds of the people that believe they live in it. But it's it never really actually existed. Like exactly. said, thought experiment. Never real to begin with. Just an idea in your mind, a way of conceptualizing things. Philosophy. So, so who did the measurement on that faithful day? Measurement of what? A concept? Nobody. You can't measure concepts. It's nonsense. It's just a way of thinking about something. You can idealize the horizon into this physical reality that it's not. Just a thought experiment. You can pretend that it's a physical obstruction. It doesn't mean it's so. We're not really on a sphere. It doesn't have geometry. Obviously, if you go out and actually test that idea and try and reify it into actual physicality, you'll fail. It's a fallacy. You can't make something that's not real real, obviously. Policy of misplaced you can't take a measurement? You can't measure a non-physical horizon. It's not geometric. Like your model requires. That's the problem. That's game over. That's the point. You can't measure... Like, I see the horizon in a way. It looks about four miles. I couldn't send somebody in a car down there 
and measure the location at which they disappear? Well, yeah, so you, so you think the horizon has an address then? Yeah, what you used to do is you'd send a boat, and at the point that you started to lose a bit of the bottom of the boat, you'd say, there you go, it's going over the horizon. Now, the problem is that we've shown yeah, horizons so that would be the, behind that. would be the measurement, oh, My bad, right? my bad. We've shown horizons that are beyond the point where you should have physical obstruction, where you used to claim on given days where the optical circumstances were conducive with your reification of a physical geometric horizon. On those days, you'd say the horizon was physically blocking a boat that you sent out to the horizon and then saw the bottom of it dis disappear. Well, you'd say that was the physical measuring point that you can draw a tangent line to, but not anymore because you're all telling us how it's not physical. It's not geometric. It's apparent. Even though your maths doesn't deal in apparent anything, it doesn't deal in apparent sizes, even though that's a much bigger effect than the mild effects of refraction. You know, things definitely get considerably smaller with distance, but that's completely ignored in the non-apparent mathematics of sphericity. It's all actual sizes and physical geometry. Not apparent anything, but you're all babbling on at the moment how the appar apparent horizon exists. Redundant, because all horizons are apparent. The geometric horizon in your model is apparent based on height. No, I'm asking who did the measurement that day. Nobody. There is no measurement to anything. There's no geometric horizon well, that's to measure. What, that's, what, that's what the whole argument rests on. Yeah, yeah, your argument that the Earth's sphere rests on you being able oh, to no, measure some no, physical no, point no, in the distance called the horizon. That's what your argument measures. Yeah, your argument measures the physical point called the horizon. Argument, Nathan. Quantum eraser's argument. The yeah, your, his argument, argument is about the Black geometry of a argument. sphere you believe you live on. His argument is based in your geometry. So if you're saying the argument's wrong, and that's what the whole argument hinges on, yeah, your argument of a sphere is what that argument is based in. The geometry of a sphere. So if that's bunk, your geometry's bunk. So who did the oh, measurement? Yeah. Who did the, it's an assertion. It's a religious belief. No one's done any measurements. There aren't any measurements to be made. It's not a physical horizon. We don't have a geometric horizon. So you can't measure non-physical horizons. You have been for the last five years because you've reified the model and claimed you can measure it. Like I just told you with a boat going out to a point you'll draw a da tangent line to when the conditions are conducive with you reifying a physical position into a non-physical horizon. You have reified these measurements. Nobody's measuring them. They don't exist. No, I think you're misunderstanding me, okay? Let, let me state... Uh, there's, uh, racers mode. there's no need for okay. a measurement. Yeah, right the, uh, there's a measurement to okay. the second platform, and the uh, horizon is behind oh. that. Well, why would we need to measure to the horizon? Who, who measured it? We don't need to. It's beyond measure geometric what? certitude that a geometric physical model is suggesting we're standing on. Your globe model says we're standing on a physical sphere with physical sphere restraints, one of them being a physical geometric horizon. Simple. You know what's funny? We used to be the ones who asked, who measured the radius? <laughs> that used to be our question. <laughs> yeah, and it still is. Any evidence of the R value? Well, the R value, nobody's measuring that. They take that value and tell us that we've got a physical geometric horizon. Now, the fundies at ground level are telling us all about how it's not geometric. It's apparent when that term's redundant. Their model still has a geometric horizon, and it's still apparent based on your height. You just don't have one in reality. Bonehead is arguing. None of that, none of the bonehead is Those arguing how you got the you distance. The bonehead is arguing how you got the distance to the uh, horizon in the black swan. It's behind the yeah, platforms. Yeah, Nathan's pretending not to understand. It's behind the platforms. Nobody's measured the distance. We know how far the platforms are. And we know the horizons behind it. So nobody's measured. Who, the who distance. measures the platforms? But nobody's measured the, the fact that the, the horizons behind means it's beyond that distance and definitely way beyond the geometric certitude that a physical sphere would offer if we were standing on one and we aren't. Who, who measured the distance to the platforms? Uh, I, I answered this already by posting the government site that showed the distance from the platform to the beach from where they measured it. So in order to build oil platforms, you have to tell the government that you're uh, how far you're going to be doing it? So that's uh, right there on the internet. So punch in habitat and and uh, platform horizon, and uh, they'll tell you. Doesn't even matter. It, even if they were wrong, the point even if they were wrong, they moved, unorthodox, though, right? and even if they were wrong, they're definitely not 1.22 miles off where it's standing, are they? Well, how would we know? You didn't measure. No. It. Uh, th yeah, they're way beyond that, mate. That's blatantly obvious just by looking at it unless you're a retard what? or blind wait a second 
I, I measured him myself on Google Earth. You measured? That's not possible. Quantum not on through. Google Earth, really. You take a fucking line, right? And you stretch it from A to B, and it gives you the distance. Next Those block of instruction, photos. how to breathe on Tuesday afternoons. Yeah, look at the date um, of the photos, Quantum Eraser. They're old as hell. Say what? Oh, God. The entire you purpose. Oh, so the distance oh, changed oh, because oh, of oh, age? Oh, Are you oh, an idiot? <laughs> you, you realize this that? This guy came on. Hang on. This guy came on saying that when he stands up, the horizon's four miles away. Who measured that? Well, that doesn't that even matter where this arbitrary paper. position may Here, turn out to be. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, I have a question outstanding. You came on this and said, I look at the horizon. It's four miles out when I look at it. How'd you measure that? Talking about according to our model. According to the physical geometry and of a sphere. Yeah, yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, we know. Model. According to the physical geometry that a sphere with a geometric horizon marked with an X in your model, labelled horizon, that's what would cause things to disappear behind it based on its physicality. And its geometry. You don't have that anymore, though. We don't have a geometric horizon. That's why it's checked. Wait, hold up. hold up. He said based on, on his model... At, I don't know how tall he is, but he saw a horizon. What? How, how far away? Four miles. He said he said four miles when he first came on to talk. I see the horizon four miles. So how tall are I you? Didn't, I that? didn't say that. I didn't say that. Oh yes, you did. When I first came on. When did I say that? Yes. Uh, when you first came on. How, how many that? first came on is there? Yeah, you did. I don't know what you. When? When you came on first. Yeah, I didn't say anything about a horizon four miles away at any point today. Yes, you did. I heard it too. You said you was. You, it looks uh, like it's about four miles away. That's your exact words. Co tag. Hey, they're just liars. They have to deny what <laughs> yeah, they said when they first come in. They first come Lucky in. Lucky I here and then immediately deny it. You know this? There's a recording on the show. Oh, you I understand that, right, Clown? Maybe I was. Maybe I don't remember for him. Well, that'll be four toe tags. I already got three on my channel for you. Oh, yeah, You're I know. Freaking I freaking retard. Toe -tagged. I'm, I'm a You're human. a retard. So, do you understand how you measure distances on Google Earth? You understand that the photos are old? The photos are old. What does that have to do with understanding distance? How? What do you mean the photos are old? Well, those, the entire premise of those types of oil platforms is, the, is that they move. <laughs> they don't move, you This is the worst wow. in the battle. They don't move. That's what so, they do. They on, float around just respond to him. To hold on, Unorthodox. Let on me just respond, Unorthodox. Yeah, in order to solve this little problem, you'd have to move those oil platforms closer to 1.5 miles. Even then, the horizon would still have to be right next to them. And it's not. So it makes no difference where you place them, even if you place them at 1.5 miles, right next to where the geometric horizon in your model would be. You've still got a horizon beyond them. It makes absolutely no difference if they've moved right into the coast on that given day. The horizon's still behind them. But like, if you want to believe that these giant oil platforms are 1.5 miles out, then that's fine by me. You can believe what you like. It's complete horseshit. But believe whatever you like. It doesn't change the argument. The horizon would still be behind them, beyond where the geometric horizon should be. They well, still think it's about the platforms and not the horizon. They don't even think that, you made a that, that you these, didn't make. Hold on. He thinks that these platforms are floating platforms, that they move constantly. Wow. <laughs> They've been there since the early 70s, you clown. <laughs> they're not floating oil platforms? <laughs> no, they're not. Of course, you'd have to know that before you made the argument, right? Did you research this? Well, I mean, typically, ocean-bearing platforms are, are mobile. Oh, they are, typically. Who are you, fucking marine biologist engineer? Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, 
or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon, and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you'd like to join the discussion right here, right now, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of my lions on the Nathan Oakley 1980 channel membership. So shout out to FE Diplomat, Anaconda Malt Liquor 17, Daz Studio 68, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Rep Priestley, uh, Windrider, All People, Three pe Free People, Eagle Plane and Anger, and is it Contra... Contrapian, Contrapitian, I can't pronounce that, I'm really sorry, but thank you very much indeed to all of my lions, really appreciate the support. Now we are joined by a whole bunch of people in both Discord and G Plus panels, so welcome one and all. Good afternoon. Hello. Black Swan, woo, woo. <laughs> Black Swan. Speaking of Black Swans. Any evidence of a physical geometric earth curve obstruction capable of measurement? Hey, sleeping warrior. Hey, 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 hey. Are you back at home? I am. I need to grab some documents off you for JLB. So I promised him I'd get him. After. Say again? The three that you were asking for the other day on refraction. You've got it. Okay, I can do that. Perfect. I don't know how to forward it anymore. I don't know. Maybe I've got him on Skype. I can't remember. Anyway, I'll, any, any, I'll signs of earth, like... any signs of Earth curvature? For me? <laughs> yeah. Have you been around the block a bit? You might have seen some Earth curvature for all I know. I didn't realise we were live. Are we live now? We are yeah, indeed are. live, Anthony. So, oh, sorry. what curvature did you find, Tony? Put your pants on. Put the dog down. We're live. Naffle. <laughs> Any signs of axial rotation? Uh, no. Not of the Earth-based variety. What about scientific evidence of gravity? Uh, none. Well, there's always the uh, bending of the conceptual medium and... I don't know, maybe they can find the geometric curve in there still. <laughs> the geometric horizon might be found in the bending of space-time. I think not. Yes. Well, maybe. You could yeah. conceptualise it, I suppose. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology or astrophysics? Uh, none. Shout out to Danny oh, Fox. Well, that you can. Real quick, Arwen's not too, too off because it would be the bending of the conceptual medium that would give the creation to this geometrical horizon, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you're right. I got see you. It? Yeah, you're you see it? I got it's you. It's the next step in the devolution of the globe in yeah, religion. <laughs> I got you, man. Yeah. It's always in the last place to look. Any chance someone can continue with the housekeeping? I've got someone cleaning my windows right outside. <laughs> can I do a two-second uh, debunk of or unorthodox? I did a two-second in internet search, and I found, uh, what does installed mean in 1969? Can you please answer that? I don't know if he's still here. He's still in a, an orthodox. He wants me to... To, he's doing a debunk, he said. Well, you said that these oil platforms might have moved. I said typically seafaring oil platforms can move around. 
what does installed mean? If you look at my look at Nathan's screen, the live stream. What does installed mean? I don't. I don't have his live stream up. It's he doesn't not, know. He's well, an engineer. Okay. Fifty. I, I I really want you to think about that. I mean, I could I could be wrong. I'm open to being wrong. I'm you know. I'm, no, I'm, well, I mean, so. let let's use some common sense here though. The oil. You okay. claim that the oil platforms are floating and moving. Now, what does it take for them to drill down to the to the ground and and get the oil out? Do you, do you think that this is a a bendy tube of some sort, or do you think it's a solid steel pipe? Well, when they move from place to place, they drill new pipes and they put new fixtures in. But it's it moves from place to place. What about these specific platforms? I would Why have to research them. Why don't you get them? detailed with us? A little specificity would help, wouldn't it? Well, I think there is some well, flexibility to them. You but didn't it's measure them regardless. So you're, so you're going by the official sources on this? No, one. I measured it. How many times do I got to tell you? You pull up Google Earth, right? You hit line. Then you start from point A and you stretch it to point B all of a sudden like. And then in the info meta information, it has distance. Next yeah, block of instruction, how to turn a light on on Thursday afternoons. So your Friggin proof, retard. so you're in your proof that the globe isn't real. You use the globe to prove uh, that the globe is glo That's not a globe. Google Earth is a globe. No, it's not. Time to measure your last. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's a sphere. Uh, it's a so sphere now we're not really? arguing about what Google Earth okay. is. Right. I want to call this in the pre-show. Unless the distance is less than 1.5 miles, which is where the geometric horizon should be there or thereabouts, depending on how many inches off the ground you want to claim he is, unless you're going to put those platforms, which were installed in the 70s and haven't moved since, at 1.5 miles, even then it wouldn't change the argument because the distance is still considerably beyond that where the geometric horizon would be. So it makes no difference where they are to the argument. Literally none. It doesn't matter where they are. No. Unless you're He's claiming they're be before. Unless you're claiming they're before 1.5 miles, so you're claiming they're only a mile out from the from this beach. Is that what you want to claim? Then you might be able to wingle this argument somehow, but I don't think you're claiming they're less than a mile away. I, I no, don't think I'm fundamentally just, how they would have an oil platform within two miles of measurement. Off. Didn't hear that. Brian Rumpus, do you say it again on Orthodox? I said I was just curious who measured it that day because Quantum Racers Modus Tolan that day? on a measurement. You don't have to measure it that day. You're, the horizon you, was different you, that day. Are you that stupid that you don't understand this concept of measuring? The horizon <laughs> was different that day. <laughs> Thanks. So, welcome to Flat Earth. Right? Yeah, welcome so to you, Flat Earth. Your argument rests on the, on the measurement to the horizon. He isn't measuring the horizon. Right. Nobody needs That's to measure the, the horizon to know it's beyond. Can we read it to you? Listen, nobody needs to measure it to know it's beyond the oil platforms. Now, unless you're going to say that a geometric horizon is what it is, and it's actually because the oil platform's less than a mile out, and it's actually a 1.5 mile geometric horizon as required. Unless you're claiming that, this whole premise of your rebuttal is useless. Now, let's be honest, they've been installed since the 70s at the distance that they claim to be, and it's definitely not less than a mile, so you're not going to wangle any sort of argument out of this. Just give it up. I, I don't trust. I don't trust the government, Nathan. Well, then, good for you. Oh, now you don't trust the government. When you were in here last time never, talking about, oh, what's wrong, guys? You don't government. trust... What does the government <laughs> have to do with measuring <laughs> on the using frigging shore? Countermeasure. What does the government Doesn't. have to do with measuring from the shore to the oil platform? You didn't measure. Whatever. This oh is useless. God. Weak, weak you argument. that computer program. Weak. Seek a frontal lobotomy ASAP. Week. I think you need to look up the term measurement. Jolly good. So <laughs> orthodox. Who measured the radius of the Earth on Orthodox? Yeah, where who did gave you, you that measurement? Radius to get the geometry from. Good point, day. chocolate. 
I think my mother did it in like seventh grade. All right. Oh, your mom did. Okay, great. Yeah. 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 Bye bye. Awesome. You're it useless. You're by, useless. By a bloke named Aristosthenes, I think. You're useless, and orthodox. This is a weak argument. It's not my argument. I'm I'm talking about your argument, the Modus Tollens argument. A weak rebuttal. So apparently, you don't understand it. Still, that's that's what's going on here. Wow, though. he's no, he's trying to attack academics itself now. It seems doesn't like it anymore. Now that he can't use it to, to, to weave like a magic wand and be all superior. Now that we, now that the actual academics are coming forward, you're attacking it. It's not. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Just like science doesn't prove anything anymore. It's like every time. Somebody actually gets the real thing. Suddenly, you don't need it anymore. Suddenly, it doesn't mean anything anymore. So Google Earth 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 Earth. Right. So Google all, all this time, it. we've been asking them how do how do they how do they get that? How do they measure that radius? Right. We don't let them presuppose anything. Now we presuppose it to formulate it into an argument based on geometry, and. Look what happens. All of a sudden, they deny it. <laughs> I mean, it's pathetic. Nobody, nobody you realize that on, on Orthodox. You You're denying the geometry you of your model. Like, that's kind of our thing. That's what makes us Glover. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> when have you ever heard uh, Glover deny the radius? Like, that's what makes us Glovers. It's like saying a Christian doesn't believe in Christ. That's what you're doing. You're denying the radius. The radius gives you a geometric horizon. I'm not denying and you guys are all denying it currently. Yeah, the the radius gives us a geometric horizon. A point to calculate from. Correct. A, a point to calculate, to calculate from that you don't have. So it gives you a point to calculate right. from. Something you'll draw a tangent line to. Because you're asserting that it the world is the physical geometry of that model. Yet you don't have a geometric horizon to draw a point to to make the mathematics from. That's the whole point of this argument. There's a serious cognitive break going on here. He he can't get the model in his no, head can. and and the real world apart. And there's this clear connection we're pointing at in the middle, and he just can't keep them apart. It's like psychosis. That's their thing. They reaffirm yeah, it. That's me, their thing. Me actually wanting to deal with optics as optics is psychosis. No, it's not an optical model. So oh, bonehead. Sorry, an optical model would have apparent sizes. Right. It's not an optical model. It doesn't deal in apparent anything. So let's not lie about what your model isn't. Definitely not optical. It's no apparent sizes in there, is there? It's uh, geometric. It's geometric. It's geometric. Not yeah, optical. Just, Our argument would be optics. Your argument would be physical geometry based on your model. Your argument... Why are you talking through me, fuckwit? Asshole, your model is based on physicality and geometry. The geometric horizon is based on your radius value. And you're relinquishing it when you tell us our non-physical, non-geometric, the reality of the horizon we experience actually is. So you don't have the physical point of a geometric horizon to base the maths on if you don't have a geometric horizon. Game over. Checkmate. No longer got anything to base this maths on. No longer got a physical sphere edge for boats to go over. No longer got a physical sphere edge horizon to block the bottom of the Isle of Man in the distance with its 170 foot wall between us and it with its physicality and its physical geometry. Definitely not optical though. That would be our argument. We talk about needing perspective. That would be apparent sizes. Well, your apparent horizon and your now claim of everything needing to be apparent isn't factored into physical geometric calculations. Or you'd have the apparent sizes and you don't. Now, the fact that things get smaller with distance is a far more prevalent effect of optics and reality than anything your model has ever had to offer. What your model offers is 100 foot lighthouse is 100 foot if it's right in front of you and you're lifting your head up to look at the top of it or it's a bazillion miles away. It's still 100 foot in your maths. 
That's why you morons utilize this maths that excludes perspective. That would be apparent in capitals, sizes, ignores them. And then you say, why can't we see New York from London? And the reason is because your model excludes apparent sizes. It would be too small. Things get smaller with distance. Ignored and labelled Earth curvature with a horizon that's geometric. It's in the model marked with an X with the word horizon next to it. It's an absolute necessity for a physical geometric assertion that Earth is a sphere. You don't have to like it. We don't have one. You're preaching. You're preaching. Okay. Stop preaching. Those You're the one with the religion. You're, you're the one with the religion, not me. Come from our science, Nathan. Those are borrowed from us. Apparent size, right? Angular diameter. Those are our terms. They're not we in your calculator, fuck <laughs> <laughs> Are you? You, you, you think when you're asking us why there's 20 feet obscured or why the 70 feet obscured? That that's dealing with angular sizes, otherwise known as apparent sizes. You think that's in your geometric maths, do you? No. Moron. Your maths for a physical geometric sphere, Earth. i say it again while he tells me I'm preaching. Because he didn't listen and talk through me. Oi. Brain dead moron. Your maths isn't dealing in apparent anything. It's dealing in physical geometric sizes that are actual. Not apparent. Not optical. You are wrong. Your religion, before he starts fucking talking through me, requires a physical geometric horizon. It's in your model, marked with an X. I am not preaching. I am telling you that which you are now denying. The necessity for a geometric horizon. To block boats from the bottom up as they go over it. To block beaches with its physical geometry. And to bend into a sphere when you visit a thermodynamics violation sky vacuum you'll never go to. All of those things are geometric and physical. Not optical, not apparent. Your maths doesn't deal in the apparent anything of the actual world we experience. Yeah, you have a complete and utter retarded misunderstanding of what... That's an ad hominem attack. So about six times in a row we've had fundies come here, they've got nothing to offer to my argument, and they add hom me as a response. He's claimed, we're ultimately responsible science. Us, fundy globeheads, we're science, and we're responsible for optics. Then I point out that his moron Muppet Maths doesn't have optics accounted for, and optics would be apparent, the buzzword amongst religious-hard moron globeheads that insert an apparent term, where it's already apparent by nature, to give them a second horizon they don't have, but it's absolutely required in their mathematics of physical geometry. But it doesn't have any optics in it. It doesn't have apparent sizes. Response, you're a moron. What do you think the horizon is in our model, Nathan? That That's a non sequitur question that doesn't address the fact that you don't have a geometric horizon anymore. Your geometric horizon's been debunked and you're denying it left and right. And then asking me what the horizon is. I don't care what the horizon is. I know it's not a geometric boundary. I know it's not physical. I know it's not the edge of a sphere, radius 3959 miles. That's what I know it isn't, because if it was, it would be obscuring things. And by virtue of the black swan, we've debunked sphere-based geometry. No sphere geometry, no sphere Welcome to Flat Earth. Well, it's not proof, Nathan. It's not science. Right, it's a logical wow. consistency that proves <laughs> beyond certitude wow. that the horizon's not physical. Wow. It's proof. Yeah, That's it is you proof. You guys think. Yeah, yeah, wow. Because who claimed this was science or orthodox? You, science. No, I have not claimed it. I'm saying it's not science, so it's not proof of anything. So what? The assumption of a physical geometric horizon we don't have is science. No, you're, you're wait, wait, whole, wait, unorthodox. So wait, so now you're saying that argument. science does prove things? Yeah, because I remember no, clearly you guys saying that science doesn't prove things. So which is it now? This is your countermeasure. I don't argue about what science, science does or doesn't do. Science proves cause and effect relationships, which this is not. This is a logical consistency. If we've got physicality, it's got constraints. If those constraints are breached, then we don't have a physical geometric horizon anymore. 
That's right. why you're all telling us the with air. this redundant term how it's apparent and talking through every last breath of me trying to tell you that apparent is redundant. Your geometric model has an apparent position where the sky meets the ground, and that apparent position is based on height. Nathan, you keep repeating the same thing. I, I, I just, oh I just want to shoot something. down this little countermeasure that he's trying to use, because it's like now they're running back to, oh, science proves things, and now this can't prove anything because it's not science. It's I'm not even, saying, you're not even low on orthodox. Your bullshit is out on display for everybody to, to hear and see. It's just nonsense, man. have been preaching this for three or two or three years now. If it's not science, it can't prove something. Don't change your story now. No, if you if claim science, which you do and have here. Now, we're not going to take apart your bullshit assertion that your model's scientific. It isn't. It's not a cause and effect relationship. It's a reification based on an R belief that is now untenable. Your R gives you a geometric horizon that you're all denying. I just want to be clear, this isn't proof because it's not scientific evidence. Sorry, scientific evidence is a cause and effect relationship being established with independent dependent variables and ruling out your independent variable or validating it is that which causes the effect. That's science. This isn't science. Nobody's claiming it's science. The only person here claiming science is you. You say your model, which is based in geometry and mathematics, is science. You're the only clown here who's claiming science. Now, we're not going to take apart your stupidity and claim that this model is science. It's not. It's not establishing cause and effect. You're stupid and think it's science. We, on the other hand, aren't claiming science where you are because you're a moron. We're claiming logical consistency based on geometry and physicality that your model would require and does not have. The air causes light to bend, so why aren't you claiming science? So, is the horizon refracted? Yes, the air causes light to bend. So, the horizon <laughs> is refracted. Yes. So, it's not geometric. Oops. Whoever said it Yo! Morons! If you come here every single day telling us that the horizon's refracted, I'm just going to stop you in your tracks. You're going to have this dumb fuck silence like unorthodox, where you say nothing for three or four seconds, and then realise the stupidity of your argument. You require a geometric horizon! Hey, a little, little louder, Nathan. Yeah, you're a moron. You fuckwits come here day after day telling us how it's refracted. If it's refracted, it's not geometric. We've only got one horizon. Yours is geometric. Nathan, uh, let me let me spell that for you, okay? Let me let me stutter a few more times while I tell him again. We've only got one horizon, and your model says it's geometric. That's just not what we have in reality. How many bloody times are you going to come here and argue for a refracted, non-geometric horizon? How many times is this going to happen? Are you all this stupid? Every fundy comes here with the same crap argument, arguing against us having a geometric horizon, which is a necessity for a geometric Geometric sphere model! Nathan, you are so pretending. I know you understand this. See, that's another ad hominem attack. Claim I'm acting. That's not addressing my argument. You've just told me how we've got a refracted horizon. Refracted, therefore not geometric. Long pause. And then a string of ad homs. Let me explain. Explain it, and you tell me where I'm going wrong, okay? You're okay, not acknowledging so the, the word I've said, and now you want time to explain something. You haven't said, yeah, I understand. My model requires a geometric horizon. It's marked with an X with the word horizon next to it, and we don't have two, as is geometric. But I'm going to claim it's refracted. Well, refracted isn't geometric. Long pause. Now you want to explain something to me. No. Actually acknowledge one word I've said. The reason I exasperated is because you don't acknowledge a word I've said. You've just argued against having a geometric horizon. That's your argument. And your model requires one, you idiot. Are you going to actually let me speak this time? Without are you going to me? acknowledge a word I've said this time? Or are you going to ignore every word I've said and move on to the same point reversed? 
reiterated and stated again without acknowledgement of a single smegging word that I've actually said to you. Which is it going to be? A complete ignorance of my point and a move on? Or are you going to acknowledge what I've just said? I acknowledge that you, what you just said. What did I say? So can I actually talk now? Well, once you've acknowledged what or I've said. You me again? I'd just like to hear I, you acknowledge I, I what said, I've I said. I acknowledge what you said. That's not acknowledging it. That's saying you acknowledge it. That's, that I'm saying I acknowledge it, Nathan. What, what are you acknowledging? What you said. What was it that I said? <laughs> I didn't write it down word for word, Nathan. Well, then go and get a fucking pen. <laughs> and go and get a pen. Right. Go and get a pen, you bunch of fundy morons. I'll wait a couple of seconds for you all in the audience and unorthodox to go and get a pen. I've said it in comments about 50 times in the last week. Get a pen. If the horizon is refracted, it's not geometric. Can you do that a little louder? I didn't hear you, Nathan. Yeah, that's because you're a stupid deaf moron with a model that's dying that has a geometric horizon we don't experience in reality. You're deaf to it because your model's dead. You don't want to hear it. Nathan, Nathan, Nathan. The light refracts off of the physical... So it was option B. Reverse and reiterate the point that he made already and hasn't acknowledged a single bloody word I've said. So he's going to argue for the second time in a row that it's a refracted horizon, ergo not geometric. The light refracts off the geometric horizon. Third time in a row, he's stuck record now, stuck record round and round and round he goes, telling us that the refracted horizon is what we experience. A refracted horizon's not geometric. He hasn't acknowledged my exasperation. That's why I'm getting so annoyed. You tell me you can't understand one sentence? Yeah, I understand you telling me that we get refraction in the air. I've asked you specifically, is the horizon refracted? And you said yes. Then I've pointed out that it's not geometric then. You haven't acknowledged that point. You've got into a stuck record mode where you repeat the same shit over the top of me and don't acknowledge that if you've got a refracted horizon, it's not the geometric requirement of your model. Try again. On the two different terms, Nathan. They're different terms. Do you understand that? Different terms. Yeah, do you uh, understand that? Sorry, different terms. They're, two, they're two different things. Do you, do you want to expand on that total vague nonsense? Different terms. Wow, how specific. Yeah. I'll rebut that. No, they're not different terms. I've no fucking idea what terms you're talking about. You blithering moron. You don't know what two terms I'm talking about. The I'm, I'm almost done with you, unorthodox. Either you expand horizon. on what fucking terms you're talking about, or I'll kick you out, you useless twat. I just told you the geometric horizon is the different thing from the apparent horizon, Nathan. They're two <laughs> different things. It, is your apparent horizon the one being refracted? Unorthodox. Well, the, you, the Earth is a sphere. Okay. It has so a he's geometric asked you a question. Horizon. Light is, comes is, is, geometric is, don't need your religious belief asserting. I don't need your religious belief asserting. Right? So you're saying we've got two horizons. They're different things. One's ge geometric, one's apparent. Now there's two responses to that. Number one. The geometric horizon, the one in your model, is also, by definition, as are all horizons, apparent. The geometric horizon is apparent based on height. So adding in a redundant term to give you two horizons when all of them are hor all horizons are apparent by nature is meaningless nonsense. Number two, we don't have two horizons. We only have one horizon. Your horizon in your geometric model that asserts we're standing on a physical sphere is a geometric horizon shock horror. But by your own admission, the horizon we see is not geometric. So we don't have a geometric horizon. Your model requires one. There's no way you can be misunderstanding this, Nathan. It's really not that complicated. That's another fucking ad hom. So you're implying that I'm stupid and don't understand your point. 
when you tell us that there are two different definitions for a horizon and therefore two horizons no i do understand we only have one horizon you haven't acknowledged the fact that we only have one horizon you haven't acknowledged the fact that if you are going to base a second horizon on a geographic location that you don't have that would be non sequitur and circular reasoning and merely reification of a model that you can't see and does not exist by your own admission but you're not acknowledging that you're just ad homing me and telling me i don't understand over and over again maybe you'll reassert that we have refraction for the fourth time and i'll I'm tell you that, you that means the horizon's not geometric for the fifth time who knows let's see i'm not saying you don't understand i'm saying you do understand and you're pretending that you don't understand that's, that's another fucking ad hom wow so that's another wow. ad hom ad hom after ad hom after ad hom so that's... you're not capable of addressing my rebuttal my rebuttal being that a we don't have two horizons and b you can't move a refracted horizon and then claim it's geometric because it isn't so you're screwed both ways and you're not acknowledging me just constantly ad homing me you're, you're now that was a major projecting there yeah. incredible yeah. i wonder if he even realizes it because he doesn't Maybe even know what he's, he's arguing about. Well, That's he's the problem. He described in detail exactly what he was doing, how he was ignoring your argument, and he flipped it around and put it very eloquently in your shoes. But it was a perfect projection. That was incredible. Yeah, that's what I'm getting pissed off with more and more and more as the days go by. All they're doing is projecting their frustrations and irritations and inability to cope with this argument onto me and quantum eraser it's driving me nuts nathan can i make a suggestion when you have a chance Go ahead. thank you <clears throat> every time at the moment when one of the ballers comes in, in here um and they start arguing about the black swan they don't want to talk about the black swan but they have to argue about it because they're in here so and what happens is they start throwing in our model this our model that I think I don't think they should get to start arguing about the black swan straight away. I think it would be better if was if if they're saying they're globe believers, they should be asked, "Have you got a model?" If they say yeah, ask them to define that model. If they can't define it, then they have to relink relink re, sorry relinquish that model. If they do define it, then they have to support what they say it is with evidence. If they can't do that, then they have to relinquish this model. Because what happens is they come in and start arguing about the black swan. And they keep saying, our oh, model this, our oh, model that, our oh, model the other thing. Show us this model. And yeah, they're already... Good, they I'm should sorry. have to get past that before... Sorry, Chocolate. They should have to get past that point before they're even allowed to talk about the black swan. They should have to either say, okay, I can't come up with a model. Okay, so you can't claim a model. No, not but the model's matter. That's literally what they're doing, though. Every time they deny the physicality of their geometric horizon, they're denying the physicality of their model. Yeah, yes, but they, they don't have to admit it. They're not saying I don't, I can't. I, they're not saying I can't support the model that I'm talking about. They're not saying that before they even get the start, because they're already claiming you think this model. model on the argument, basis of calculations is denying our model. One second, one second. You are so. Are you claiming a model on orthodox? Uh, yeah, chocolate just to have said, a globe model. Uh, yes or no? Using our model for the basis of our calculation. Do you claim to model. have a globe model? Well, what? On orthodox? Do you claim to have a globe yes. model? But yes. I, I think I mean, I it's a more important question. Hold on, yeah, let, let, let him go. I want to hear where this goes. Yes, on orthodox, on. did you say yes? It's real. That's the question. Hang on. Oh, hold on, Alvin. Second. I just want to see where this goes. Go on, Brian. Let's see what he's got to offer. Thank okay. you. On orthodox, did you say yes? Do you agree that you have a globe model? I don't personally have a, a model myself. The you, hang on, has a I'm model asking you a question. Is, is there a globe model that, that you that you uh, that you um, refer to? Yeah. Yes. What type of model is it? Can you define that model? Okay. And in terms of the Earth, it would be the WGS map. The WGS. Okay, and uh, so yeah, your model is the WGS 84. Whatever the current correct? version is. I forget what the exact current version is. They update it constantly. WGS 84. And is that an, ell an ellipsoid? Roughly, yeah. It's 
It's okay. Bro, it's a sphere, but it looks what you want to call it. Sure. Yeah, but is a WGS a sphere or an ellipsoid? Well, it's not a perfect sphere, so I guess it would be classified but, as a form of an ellipsoid. But what's a classified as? It's a flattened ellipsoid. Flattened ellipsoid. So that's what you're claiming your model is. It's, it's a it's it's a spherical Earth that conforms to all the topography of Earth. Say again. And all the, not the spherical. kind of chubbiness at the bottom. It's not not spherical. Spherical. He doesn't. He doesn't listen. It is a flattened ellipsoid. Please stop saying it's spherical. It's a three-dimensional flattened ellipsoid model. Of yeah, flattened Globe ellipsoid Earth. model. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm not flattened talking about ellipsoid. You think we live on a flattened, squashed ellipsoid, do you? That's your model, is it? The WGS-84. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's the basis for, like, it's a flattened all ellipsoid. Flights, it's the basis of a flattened ellipsoid. All military a flattened operation. Ellipsoid. Flattened ellipsoid is what it is. You don't know what the WGS-84 is. What is a flattened ellipsoid, an orthodox? It's our model of Earth, Nathan. Is it? I thought your model of Earth was sphere shape. It's something that's, that's not a picture per- show. They don't show a flattened ellipsoid in the NASA pictures. What kind of fucktard are you? You think the NASA? Well, I don't think you can find what like a model. You think, of either. you think the blue marbles are flattened ellipsoids? Like is, that, a- is that what you think? You think the blue marbles are flattened ellipsoids? You complete retard. Are you kid in front of you today, Nathan? Yeah. Okay. I know. You think WGS eighty four is flattened ellipsoid? Is the model of Earth? Okay. Yeah. You're a retard. I really hope your kid's not in front of you today. Sorry, is that an ad hominem what? attack? Is that, is that an ad hominem attack because you've claimed WGS84, you don't know what it actually is. I've pointed yeah. out the shape of it, and now you're asking about my children. What a cunt. Well, you're what you're a cunt. About somebody what an absolute like cunt. Nothing. You fuck. Get the fuck out of my hangout. Why are you That's... talking about my kids as a rebuttal to an argument about a flattened ellipsoid? You disgusting bastard. Who the fuck are these people? So you can't attack my argument, so you'll ask me about my kids. This is the level you scumbag globeds will sink to these days. Yeah, you can't attack the argument. You can't defend your globe, but you can attack my kids. Why are you talking about my kids? Death rose, and he's out of the hangout. Sorry, Nathan, I wanted to go that direction. No, nah, it was all right. It's was, it was to hear them say, "Oh, the WGS84 is my model." <laughs> yeah, that's everything. not what NASA shows you. Exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, but it's good because they have to define their model, and then they have to support what they say it is. Either if they can't define it, they have to relinquish it. If they can define it, then they have to support it. I mean, how does the WGS84 explain, um, you know, weather? You know what I mean? Because that's supposed to be part of their model. It's all nonsense. But if they, if, they, if they have to relinquish it at the start, then they can't even claim a model after that. Because that's what they're all going back to. They always start with this model. You know, our model this, our model that. And they're still asking us for a model. They're still at it. You know, the same the very thing they have never been able to define, you know, consistently. Because you ask a different baller, they'll tell you something else. You know, they'll tell you it's Google Earth. You know what I mean? No, they, they never define it and they never, uh, they never support it. But yet they, they're asking us for it for five years. They have to support their model, define it and support it before they, oh, that's what I think anyway, before they even get a chance. They don't even deserve to talk about the Black Swan. They don't even know, they don't know what it even is, most of them. Hey, sorry for interrupting you earlier, Brian. I, I was kind of wanting to add on your argument there. because No answer, th- Okay, that's cool. But I think that it's, I think the more important question even isn't like, what is their model? It, it's like, does he truly believe that the model is an accurate representation of reality now with all the consequences that come with it and the black swan? I think that is the bigger question because it just seemed like he was spending all his time just keeping the model apart from the reality always bypassing the middle as we are pointing at the middle at, at the actual connection or the lack thereof and i think the more core question is is the model an actual representation of reality 
Yeah, but exactly. this is again the denial of their model because again they're calling the Q and the Modus Tollens a straw man because they say they don't believe that any horizon distance can be no more than 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height in feet if they have a radius of 3959. As soon as they say that's not what we believe, well, that's, it's again, not based on belief, based on the math, the geometry of your model that's been given to you. So keep denying it because it's hilarious <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Go ahead, so, keep denying it. That's that's the physical limit of your sphere. So the so. starting point is always mathematics. They always start with a calculation, a mathematical a mathematical calculations, and then Bro. they try and twist optics and and measurements to suit that calculation. That's all it is. The globe is a calculation. It's a mathematical equation. You know, it's one big equation, and then they they've been trying to make optics and uh, physical measurements uh, 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 fit that. You know, back engineering reality to fit this nonsense for 500 years. Well, probably and more and than and those of 50 or 60 years. But And if those parameters are wrong, then why is it when I take uh, the, you know, the proof of nothing, beg of the question, perspective, hijack and curve calculator, and I put in one foot, he gives me 1.2 miles. So wh what's that for? If we've never seen the thing, <laughs> yeah, how did they find that out? <laughs> exactly. Why do we have a calculation for something we have never seen? How does that help us? <laughs> because they don't. Yeah, because they don't it's have any joke. measurements. It's they a have joke, man. It's a wrap for you guys, man. It's pathetic. It's no different what shape you make it. You know, outside of flat, you can make it any shape and add mathematics to it, and it won't make it any more credible. So any shape out outside of flat is as credible as the glow model, if you understand what I mean. Because it's all math. Depends on what it's the, that model is going to presuppose, though. But, yeah. It, the Earth definitely seems seems, and as far as measurable goes, the deducible is, it seems very much flat, yes. That doesn't reveal yeah. everything about it, and how big it even is, but the orientation of the land mass definitely seems flat. Yeah, the geography seems to be flat. So, so it's like an indirect way of going your route, right? You were trying to ascertain, do these guys even have a model? Well, dealing with the black swan, every rebuttal they have is a denial of their model. Right. So that's why I wanted to kind of point out, maybe we should ask the more personal question do you think that your model actually represents reality at this point with everything that's happened because they seem to almost force it forcibly move their own consciousness around the whole issue constantly while they've been doing that for a while but now it's very persistent and keeping the actual optics and the measurements or well the the photographs and the measurements in their model apart, completely compartmentalized and just claiming it connects, but not looking at where it actually is supposed to connect. And I think that maybe we should just ask them, like, do you really believe that your model that you're working on right now, that you're thinking about right now, do you truly believe that that represents reality at this point? So what you're saying is we should say to them, are you guilty of reification? Yeah, basically. Well, yeah, in the technical sense, but it's a, it's kind of more a personal question that way. You could like, put the, the Are you sure just... you are doing what you think you're doing? Well, you just put your arm around them and tell them you are guilty of reification. Okay. The thing about it is, if they have to relinquish relinqu relinquish uh, uh, the reference point of the globe model that they talk about before they even get into start an argument then if they have to relinquish this whole globe thing that they can't they can't define or support uh, uh as their model before they even get a start the argument uh, and, and, and any kind of argument about anything then the black swan photograph just becomes a very interesting nice photograph because they can't make an argument because the thing they were supposed to be arguing for they've had to relinquish from the very onset that unorthodox came on it was apparent 
He was gutter rat. He was not interested in pursuing truth. He couldn't, he avoided all the questions. This is all we got. All we got is the gutter rats of the ball. And we're not having a decent conversation because they end up ad homming and projecting like Arvin said, because I saw what Arvin saw as well. So uh, we got to get a better crop of ballers here who are really interested in the reality they live in and ask pertinent questions and look at everything that their model says and test it uh, by all means. But we're not getting that crowd. We're getting unorthodox who comes here, pretends to be real, but all along his game plan is to somehow, some way trip up Nathan or QE or somebody else. And all they have is remorse. It's just spewing out of them. Wow. Projection. But no matter, I agree. I agree. Well said. No matter who they are, though, no matter who they are to come in, if they have to define and then support a model, they won't have one. That's it. I'll do a quick, couple of quick plugs. So, for those of you not watching this live, or for those of you watching on Nathan Oakley 1980, first and foremost, if you did want to be watching this live, you need to be subscribed to my second channel. So, there's a link below to Nathan Oakley channel. If you did want to watch these occasional live shows, they go out on a Friday afternoon on the second channel live. There's also weekend shows that go out and daily shows on the second channel, which are uncut and after show, which tend to have a bit more material tend to get a bit more heated, maybe a bit more bad language after the live show. That said, this this particular <laughs> live show has had quite a lot of bad language, thanks to Unorthodox winding me up. So my apologies to anybody with younger audience members. My bad. Anyway, that's just how frustrated you get when people start attacking your kids rather than the argument. That's just the way things are. Unfortunately, my language gets a bit more blue when I'm attacked in that manner. Anyway, subscribe today to Nathan Oakley channel. Also, because this is going out at 2pm on Saturday, um, this is pre Busters, so I can actually plug... Ballbusters show and to the Friday live audience in Nathan Oakley. So, Ballbusters on the Quantum Eraser YouTube channel. That's 1 p.m. Is it 1 or 2 p.m.? 2 p.m. Central Standard? 1 p.m. No, I thought it was 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Central Standard and 7 p.m. UK time on the Quantum Eraser channel. So, that's Ballbusters live. Be here or be sphere on Saturday, the 22nd of February. That's as I say on Quantum Eraser channel. 7 p.m. UK time, 1 p.m. Central Standard. And uh, obviously, we'll be covering the Black Swan. What else are we covering this week, Quantum Eraser? Black Swan and the Salar. Salar, cool. Excellent. That should be fun. Who else can I shout out? Oh. Flat Earth Early Bird. Let's do it. Let's do, it. Let's do the Ballbusters. So, subscribe today to Flat Earth Early Bird, which is on Arwin's channel, A R W I J N. Typically, it goes out before each of the live shows. Not not in this instance, because this is on the second channel, slightly later in the day, but 1 p.m. Amsterdam time, two, uh, no, 12 p.m. No, 2 oh, p.m. 2 p.m. Amsterdam 2 PM. time. <laughs> Get there in the end. 2 p.m. Amsterdam time, 1 p.m. UK time, and it's like 6 a.m. <laughs> Central Standard. So it's pretty early in the morning, hence the name Flat Earth Early Bird. So be here or be sphere, 1 p.m. UK time on ARWIJN, that's our wind channel. Also, got Sleeping Warrior here. Don't know if he's actually about. He's on mute and has been for a while. But uh, check out Sleeping Warrior's channel. And uh, who else have we got? Let's kind of plug. Betty's oh. Discord server. Yeah, so Betty's gracious enough daily to let me use the Flat Earth Science versus Pseudoscience Discord server. So she literally lets me use it. Very gracious that it is. I'm very grateful to the, to the server owner which is betty van velsen thank you very much indeed for letting me use the server so check out flat earth science versus scientism that's the discord server that we use on a daily basis there's a link below this live show and all live shows to join the server typically you join and you're immediately labeled as a baller until you're actually <laughs> vetted so to speak and then you can have your status changed if you actually are a flat earther but by default you're don't forget as a baller. don't forget bible litterers yeah, I was going to come to Bible Literalist and Quantum Eraser. Obviously, Quantum Eraser, I've just shouted him out for Ballbusters. He's obviously one of the Ballbusters, along with Bible Literalist and Dr. John D. So check out Bible Literalist. Excellent, excellent member of the Ballbusters team. Very, very good channel. Same with goes for Dr. John D. So check out Dr. John D. Chocolate's not got any Adam material. Micken. Neither's Tenth Man, but they're both on the credits. Say Iron, uh, Adam. Adam Meakin. God, how could I forget? One of my favourite people. Adam Meakin of Iron Realm Media. So also be here or be sphere. Um, it'll have gone out yesterday if you're watching this on Nathan Oakley 1980. But today, if you're watching this live, 
uh, at I think it's 10.30 the, the latest time might be a bit later 11pm there or thereabouts uh, UK time on Iron Realm Media and that's Have No Sphere and that's uh, the Iron Realm show it goes out weekly on a Friday night so check it out I don't think I missed anybody that's everyone right Or I think uh, Quantum Eraser Rumpus your shout out to me and Tough Man yeah I did yeah <laughs> I said, although they don't have content we've also got Tenth Man and Chocolate Sane, who are very highly valued members of the Ballbusters team, but they don't actually have content to shout out. So there's no no actual channel to direct you to, or no footage on the channels e in either event. So, but still, massive shout out to Tenth Man and Chocolate Sane, who are both ace. Future cooking channel on the way. Yeah, you can ignore that. I've got a few. few I want to shout out. I want to shout out. Uh, twenty four seven flat Earth Discord two point oh. Yeah. Um, Jose, check Jose it out. Mesa. Awesome, yeah. Jose Meza, the one of the admins over there. Awesome, talking about flat Earth twenty four hours a day. So check it out. Emma UK. Yeah, Emma UK. Emma. Big shout out to Emma UK. Yep. yep. He's also got a Discord server run similar shows to this. Excellent stuff. Um, the reason I've done all those shout outs and all those announcements is because this is uh, about this sort of time ish is a fairly big time for me personally in regards to YouTube and my channels. So as it stands, the main channel, Nathan Oakley 1980, is or has just tipped over 4 million views and the subscriber count has just tipped over 17,000. So two reasonably big milestones in terms of that channel literally in the last couple of days and the second channel is about 25 subscribers short of 5,000 subscribers and has tipped over a million and a half views so sort of five and a half million maybe six if you include the other little ancillary channels I've got um so quite a substantial number of million <laughs> views and quite a substantial amount of subscribers one of which is just like to say ticked over to 17,000 and the second channel subscribe today if you're watching on Nathan Oakley 1980 is about to tip over to 5,000 so there's like a fair few little milestones I just wanted to get verbally down and they're all noteworthy but most importantly I just want to thank everyone who supports me as and actually subscribe to both of those channels now obviously there would be no channel there'd be no monetary incentive, there'd be no super chats, there'd be no PayPal donations, there'd be no Patreons, there'd be no channel members, there'd be no shows if it wasn't for all the people actually subscribed and watching. So as much as I shout out all the Patreons, yes, obviously I appreciate it, I do have to eat, and I shout out all the channel members, um, literally the most important people, the thing that makes the channel, is the people actually watching. So a massive shout out to all of you in the audiences and all of you who are subscribed. I am eternally grateful to you all. Yes, and that even Quite includes you ballers. <laughs> Thanks for being here, guys, and sharing your pain with us. Yes, thank you very much. Share your pain. Telling, bringing it back on track to the argument or the discussion we were having earlier, and you were explaining, Brian, that you want them to concede what their model is and what it does. You're essentially asking for a, a reverse order of the debates. So, had the debates have started with the Black Swan and then progressed on to them conceding what their model is, we'd have the order that you described. In reality, it's actually a better order. They've argued the toss about what their model is and the physical geometric values that block things, etc., for two and a half straight years on the debates. We've got them all logged, they're all recorded, they're all available. So, we know what their position is. Now, the fact that having declared their position quite boldly, they now come and deny it, is going to be the most telling part of this show to date. The audience members who are on the fence are going to be watching this going, oh my God. You know, if they've got even more than a month's worth, of, maybe a bit more than a month, maybe more than two months worth of watching this show, they'll know what the ballers were claiming. They'll know their position's changed, and they'll know how their new position is untenable based on the geometric requirements of their model. So it's, it's a very good time to be a flat earther in flat earth debate currently. I'm glad all the milestones have come in terms of number of subscribers and views and all the rest of it at this particular time, you know, especially in the year of the Black Swan.
No, that. I think that going going the other the way I was suggesting would make the show less entertaining and shorter because you know basically you're taking away the thing that they are going to come in and argue for, which is what you want them to do because you know they can't support it anyway. You know, so you're correct. I mean, as far as the show goes, it's it's better. It is better in hindsight. It is better to uh, not have them have to relinquish that at the start. You know, it is better because. You know, then they they are going to fight for that. You know, you have to give them something to fight for. You know, uh, even if it's nonsense. So you know that makes the show because you have all the contradictions you need. You know, so yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, it would be far more concise if we started the argument with them saying we have a geometric physicality to Earth that's sphere shaped. That geometric physicality can be predicted in terms of how much obstruction you will have from the bottom up based on how far past the tangent line we will draw to the physical geometric obstruction there is. And then we show them a black swan image and they go, we don't have a geometric horizon. Uh, my model doesn't work. <laughs> and they'd say, oh, I'm so glad I realised the Earth is flat. But that's in a real idealistic world. In reality, we've had them coming and telling us how physical and geometric the Earth world is and how the horizon is obscuring things. And now they come and lie about it <laughs> and ad hoc the crap out of me and project their own pain onto us. Yeah, uh, I mean... Sorry. I was going to say, do you recall your end of the year show 2019, how we said, we all had a feeling, everyone on the panel pretty much agreed that 2020 was going to be a very, very special year for Flat Earth. And... It wasn't much long after 2020 started then the Black Swan showed up. And now it's just gaining like a locomotive, just going downhill. And it's just like a freight train. It can't be stopped. I can't wait to see where it is. Three months, six months, nine months. And by the end of the year, it's going to be a fantastic year. And with that, I'll say if you are watching this on the Nathan Oakley 1980 premiering stream, then stay tuned as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you're watching this live on Nathan Oakley channel, subscribe today if you're not watching it live, then this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you for tuning in, subscribing, getting me to over 5 million views across the two main channels and all that good stuff. Of course, a massive thank you to today's Discord G Plus panels for making this live show possible. Stay tuned if you're watching on Nathan Oakley 1980, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! <laughs> Nathan, close up the show and rump us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no, yeah I was gonna I think I was gonna add something to your point. Uh, I'm but... sorry. Well, yeah, we've still got no, the majority right. of the audience with us, so most of the people watching the show watching it aren't watching it live anyway. So that's why I asked him, but he can't remember what he was gonna say. <laughs> It'll come back to you later. It's probably yeah. for the best anyway, because typically at this point in the show, this is where like a whole load of people drop off for some reason. That's why I reiterate right. over and over again verbally that don't leave, don't don't tune out, <laughs> stay with us. God, don't look out because <laughs> all the live stream you lose like twenty people every time it happens. Right. My language was terrible today in the live show. Is there still an after show? This is the after show. Just Ah, it okay, just started. Right. right. Sorry, I wasn't sure. I'm four just seeing. Four more hours. Yeah, four more hours indeed. Black Swan. Who? Who? You get it? Is Quantum <laughs> Eraser still here or is he gone? Who? You the eat. Orthodox got kicked out when he started ad homing my kids. <laughs> anyway, I want to. QE, not unorthodox. Oh, I think QE is still here, yeah. Let's have a look. Yes, he is. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm eating breakfast. <laughs> Can can I point out for a second that I saw Vegan Goy in chat? I haven't seen him in a long time. I just checked out his channel. He's wearing suits now. <laughs> yeah, I'm still subscribed to Vegan Goy. I occasionally watch his live streams. Cool. He's got a huh. good dis he's got a Ooh. he's got a Skype I thought he was in his <clears throat> Skype group. You're not in his Skype group. No, um, I'm not. Oh no, he but hates you, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. And I I do think he's a little septic, if you know what I mean. But it's still an interesting character, you know. So I Septic. guess you have the same thing with Sean Hawkins. <laughs> Septic oh, is, is Cockney rhyming slang for American. Hmm? 
Septic is Cockney rhyming slang for American. Septic tank. Yank. Yes. Really? That? I thought wow. the septic was just like, <laughs> really? toxic. I thought septic is just toxic. Like pe- people that let their morals slip on a regular basis without regret. What my fa- thought, well, my favorite what my favorite Cockney rhyming slangs ever is to do with um, septics, which is if you were to if you if someone was knocking an American, so like Anthony, you know, says things like they're not all stupid, <laughs> things like that, and I'm like Anthony doesn't represent the views of this show. Anyway, um, that would be described as being Listerine. Now I get this; out. it takes a bit of explaining. So Listerine is antiseptic so anti <laughs> anti american so don't be se- don't be listerine wow. <laughs> don't be listerine would be the cockney rhyming slang for don't be anti american don't be listerine what wow that's complex <laughs> i yeah, have man, no idea cockney rhyming slang that's not the, that's not the source that i took septic from I've noticed it in the in the gothic scene being used, the septic, like people that poison the well that just make things ugly, you know? Yeah, a you're septic pro- thing is like corn, a sewage like tank. Fear porn is, yeah, exactly, that make things <laughs> disgusting, and fear porn is a big part of it. No, you're correct, uh, Darwin, about the word septic, but Nathan's talking about Cockney rhyming slang. Right, they, I they, didn't they, know they about They have that. their own language, more or less. I know, I know. <laughs> I, ha- no, I, I, no, I still no agree idea. with your point. I still agree with your point. He's, he's septic, which is to say, like, rotten, poisonous, disgusting. I, I Listerine my septics every five years. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Tom. <laughs> That's... Is that a yes. euphemism for a, a rectal exam, or...? No, it's uh, I live on I live on property, so I have everything's on septic. Every house has a septic. It's got a, uh, what they used to call a leech line, but now we use half dome infiltrators. They work better than the rocks for the leech line in the past. And uh, every five years, you call the company. They come in with a truck and they suck it all out. Great right. debate, ladies Glad. and gentlemen. For all your septic tank requirements, we've got you covered. Oh. I, 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 actually, I actually have something to insert that's very relevant to this specific subject. Hey, I'm kind of into environmental things, you know. There is systems out there. There's basically uh, housing complexes. They're kind of expensive, but it kind of works where you don't need any sewage connection because as long as you don't overfill it with people constantly going to the toilet, it has a self-cleaning like a, a a pond system using water lilies, it's pretty complex, and completely self sustaining, and you don't need any sewage, you don't need any septic tanks for that. It it literally refines all of it, as long as you don't constantly overcrowd the house, as were. Well, yeah, then you can't have any. You heard of, but have you heard of it? Well, it's a crappy system, in my opinion. It, it is. Yeah, really? you bloody hippie. That was a yeah, good one. <laughs> that was a good one right there, wasn't it? It's a crappy system, are we? Come on. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Keep really? up. <laughs> have you looked into it? Oh, my yeah. God. Well, I you can't have this any, stuff like 10 years ago. You can't, well, you can't have too many people use it, so it's impossible uh, for guests to come over and use because you'll overload it. So No, all, that's, all no, that's my, only if you do that like every freaking day. You know, you, of course you well, can. Well, it all depends. It all depends how, how big your pond is, I guess. But uh, the, the trees and the bushes that line the leech line, they all do well. They grow quite well. Right. Oh, you got it in lines to go out to the to the trees and shit. Oh. Well, you have to. You have to. You, it's it's a big. Uh, 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 what's the word? <laughs> so the, it has to go uh, through fiberglass. fermentation. Fiberglass. No, I was going to say polyester, but no, uh, fiberglass tanks. So there's these fiberglass tanks, and the the immediate stuff goes into the first container, and then it the whatever uh, floats up goes to the second container, and then it floats up, and then it goes down the pipe, uh, and you might have 80 feet of infiltrators, and that's buried underground by four or five feet. 
And so now that just seeps into the ground, but all the root systems go run to it because they, they love all the nutrition. Interesting. Great well, discussion look. during breakfast. Thanks. <laughs> I, you know, John, I thought about that. <laughs> I was like, hey, we're hey, talking hey. about this shit while John's eating breakfast. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to expand on that a little and, th and say that. <laughs> no, we want to. No, but the self containing fluid system can definitely be made bigger and more efficient to account for much more people if necessary. It's, but it is like a, an investment thing. But then, literally, if you have it worked out, you don't need any sewage connection. You're no, never going to have that problem again. Yeah, well, the septics don't have sewage connection. They just go right in the ground. They don't connect to anything yeah, with the but city or the county. I know, I know. But that only works as long as there is a, an entire system out there that will perpetuate the collecting of it and everything. You know, the thing is about if you're completely self-sufficient, doesn't matter what the hell happens to society, you'll have a functioning system no matter what. Yeah, when the nuclear bomb goes off, I'll no, have a toilet that works. No, no, no. no just, just chaos. You don't need any nuclear bomb. You just need chaos. Okay. Anything in the world goes bad, my toilets still work. How's that? Right. Perfect. The, uh, no, unless, no, doesn't. unless collection time has been skipped. Uh -oh. Then you've got a problem. <laughs> no, collection right. time could be offset by uh, gray water. So... You tie your showers into it, your sink, your washing dishes, water into it. So you're offsetting it with a lot of water. So it lasts longer. And uh, the only time they really want you to pump it out is when you're going to sell the property for the new owner, basically. But it's good to do it every five years. Plus, there's additives you throw in there that break down the bacteria and all that kind of stuff. So you do recycle it yourself as well? No, I don't touch it. It goes in the ground and seeps down into the ground like everything else. And the tree roots and everything start running towards it because it's nutrition for them okay that's good i guess that could work as long as you keep any chemicals out of it as it were but you're probably wise enough to do that well you can't put any chemicals in it because then you break down the bacteria that's needed to break down everything so exactly, you can put bleach exactly. In it. yeah yeah right I, I love it that you got that covered so well and carefully that's good i, I just wanted to add also like i'm pretty sure before excrement and all that can be absorbed or used by plants, it needs to undergo a certain level of fermentation and bacterial processes. It needs that. If it's just raw, it doesn't work as well. It needs to undergo that process. Usually happens naturally out there. Yeah. And but if you got that covered, that's that's really cool, actually. That yeah, that that kind of functions in the same way in a way. But just using the nature out there. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. What's the old method to throw a dead sheep? Say again. Say again. What's the old method to throw a dead sheep in them? Uh, no, that, that would be too big. Uh, uh, there is a method. There is a method of throwing like a squirrel, a dead squirrel, or something of that size. What? For the bacteria. Oh, what? right. Rotting bacteria, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, you could use, if you, f for example, have a farm or whatever, or you butcher your own animals, you could use the guts for that shit, probably, right? Yeah. No, I don't do that. Uh, right. there's, a, Just there's, saying a powder, there's a powder you can get. It escapes what the name is, but it's natural, and you throw that in once a month a little bit. You just flush it. Or, the, yeah, normally in your toilet, you just pour the powder in, you flush it, and it goes in there and does what that animal would do. Yeah. It, How's that biology, breakfast going, John? Isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's going great. <laughs> Stay tuned it's freaking amazing. We talk about toe jams and throw up. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate, that was great. <laughs> Occasionally, this has to be the way of things to entice in an unsuspecting globe head. That thinks, oh god, these guys are talking about throwing in rotten sheeps and things. Clearly, <laughs> not not going to be. But we can't talk about Back to the Future anymore. That doesn't bring them in anymore. So what? <laughs> well, I, I, can't, I can't. I can't throw a rotten sheep in there because yep. then I'll never get their goat. Chocolate, chocolate. For that to work, we'd have oh to go god. back in time. Gotta go back in time. Everybody's head. 
just by coincidence, <laughs> my my folks moved into a farm in Shropshire many years ago. They don't live there anymore. But when they did, it had an outhouse, and just by coincidence, it did actually have a dead sheep in it. Oh, there you go. When they moved in, there was just a random dead sheep in their outhouse. Weird. Yeah, a little bit. I don't think it was there to help biodegrade anything that was going to be potentially no, going it, in there. It was it was literally taking up the entire space. But there we go. Just thought I'd mention it. Well, that we was, really talking that about was an interesting transition. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Maybe that'll draw a close to this conversation. <laughs> Hopefully. We can only That was hope. great. Hey, John, how's the bacon? <laughs> hey Emma, you got a shout out on the live show. Oh, thank you. I bet What's that. What's up, Emma? I chocolate. I apologise, my voice is still terrible. Damn, Emma. Okay. Got you. Yeah, everybody's getting a cold now. There's no no wonder, you know, if it's constantly being talked about viruses and shit. Yeah, that's what happens. If you hear it everywhere, everybody's gonna get it. Gonna get some kind of cold. Psychosomatics. We have the blind sniper in that was talking earlier before in chat about two horizons, the apparent horizon and the geometric horizon. Why don't you come off mute and share your plane, blind sniper? Uh, you're on mute. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, we can hear you now. Go ahead. I said it's a bad moment. I'm really sorry. Math Matthias pissed me off. I'm not in a good mood. I'm sorry. Who's Matthias? What's troubling you? I don't think he's in the mood. That's what he's just explained. <laughs> so, fair play. We don't have two horizons. Just so you know. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where Where is the geometrical horizon now? Where's that connection point that's supposed to anchor the model of the of the globe Earth to the real world now? Where is it? Where is it, globe Earth? I know you do, you constantly spin around it. Such a simple little point, and you kept it concealed so well for so long with so many machinations, and now we unravel them all. And the black swan is just floating in the water right in the middle there. So where's the connection now between your model and reality, Globers? I think the globe model went into the septic. <laughs> well, I don't know how well it's going to digest. Uh, you know? It's got to compete with a, la a sheep. Well, well, it doesn't exist, so... <laughs> it won't won't be much digesting needed. Just, <laughs> just thinking about it. It's full of shit anyway. <laughs> I agree. That sounded like a familiar yeah. voice. Who was that? I don't know, Alan B. Yeah, it's, it's, it sounded like Alan B. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it was me. Wow. And, oh, and you made a, a septic joke. That's that's pretty good, Alan B. <laughs> well, well, that's how the globe model started, and then it evolved, Alan B. Oh God! So you got some new inspiration, Alan, back on the scene. Nathan. Yes. Do you want a screen share? I've got some evidence of a horizon being refracted on top of a horizon. Okay, cool. Uh, screen share. Is this one of yours? Yeah, it's an old yeah, video no, that I, cool. I made a while back, and yeah. um, I remember right. I remember doing it, and I remember thinking to myself at the time, 
I've never seen this before. This is weird as hell. Now, will the real looming please stand up is the name of the video. It's on my channel, yeah? Isle of Man, North Brules, Snaefell Pike. Notice down here where it drops into the water that we're all familiar with. There should be a gap of where there should be, like, like no land but water. And we can see there's, like, this band along this bottom. Travis would call it the ether band. I just call it dirty air because I don't really know what's going on. But what I want you to pay attention to, what I want you to pay attention to is what happens when the land tapers down to what we used to call the, the nose of the aeroplane and it meets the water. And we know that it goes into the water from this perspective, which is here. Wow. Now, this is where it lips back under itself, right? Then there should be a gap of water. But I want you to notice this hard horizon here, this dark colored line. That's where the water and the, la the land appear to meet. But there's this weird thing going on on top of it. So when we go across the water to the other side, watch this. For some reason, the land appears above the actual horizon, but where the land should be on the actual on the real horizon, it's not actually there for some reason. So this seems to be the horizon being loomed on top of itself, you know, like with respect to itself. But if this is looming, right, then it's not the way they're telling us. It's not curving lines. But I'm going to suggest that this might actually be looming and this is the only example we've got because this land that's here should be down here. But for some reason, there's no land down here, but it seems to be lifted up away from its actual position. So let me just rewind it a little bit to here. So as this land takes it down moving. to a point and then it goes into the water, you can see where the water line actually is. This mirage thing here, this is this will be called exceptional or um, like crazy refraction, right? Whatever they want to call non-standard refraction. But the, the water line appears to be here. And that's that's where the land should reappear when we get across the, the, uh, the gap. But as you can see, for some reason, the, the land mass is above it. But there's no apparent land mass below it. So it's as if the horizon's been loomed up above itself. Isn't this kind of like that ship that Curie showed at the Scottish Open? No, I think and now it seems to be coming back in. No, but the it that's just a point where apparently whatever the conditions are, there's like a different refraction layer or something that causes the the mirroring effect, the sudden nudge and the, the reflection. Well, beyond it, apparently for some reason it comes back. It, it but it's clearly like a mirroring effect you're looking at, right? It's, it's not mirroring. No, but it is mirroring the the, not, the color of the down. sky above it. It's not upside down. No, more to the more to the right. Yeah, it's not mirroring though. No, but it is mirroring. It's that color. If it's I not mirroring. Know. When it mirrors, it's only upside down. Thanks. It's the, the, got the correct term. The correct term is is looming. So, is this looming then? Is this the horizon being lifted up from no, its normal no, no, no. position? No, the land has been loomed up above the horizon. So, there's the horizon. There's a gap between it oh, right that. now, and the land is above yes. it. And as is some of the water in that bit that just went by. So, you've got the land above what appears to be the point where the sky meets the ground on screen now. And then, as you go further across to the north end of the Isle of Man, you've got the land looming above the horizon exactly as looming describes it no i i, I, I don't <laughs> think know. so i think that it's just a weird in it's because of refraction layers because of moist conditions because they're just look at all the water there's all these lines that stand out in a certain color so there's many 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 horizons if you just go by the color line as it were but where is the actual horizon? I think it's pretty far in the distance. And yeah, that there is a lot of warping going on out there. And you are actually seeing the land. But I don't think that the horizon is lower down in this image. Not really. But then you're missing the point. Is that, is if that not just towering? No, I think this is looming because look, you need to be aware. Of this 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 dark blue line here is what what we perceive as the horizon when there's no land behind it, right? This is where the horizon actually is, or the the apparent horizon. This is where we would draw boats going over the horizon, right? But the land comes down and drops into this. But this thing that's here, this band that's here, is blocking what is 
Otherwise, just clear air, it's, it's giving the perception that there's something there, right? But when the land comes back in, instead of the land being on the, lo the lower level, for some reason, it's loomed up, and it's now in the right. upper level. Right, but Anthony, you just said it. The land is loomed, not the horizon. So it's not the horizon looming on the horizon. Sure, but at least I can argue that with some credibility that there appears to be two horizons for whatever weird reason in this. No, it's there, there does not appear to be two horizons. There appears to be one, and the land is loomed above the one as far well, as we can see it. No, well, I actually agree with Rand. These are multiple apparent horizons, points that is you it? can interpret as a horizon, but we're not entirely sure what is transpiring here. You would have to move towards it or move upwards to be sure, to see it dispelled, as it were, to see the the effects dissipate because of the height. So, okay, so, so, on, so on, on, on another I'm day, sure. so on another day when this doesn't do that, and you just see one horizon, because there can only be one horizon, then it's all optical. Yeah, but, I agree it's all optical. But I'm yeah. saying, yeah, optical horizon effects may be more complicated. But there's, it's okay. always optical, it's no matter what. Is the second piece of land not just short or back in the fourth Hold piece on a second. Can you take a screenshot, Anthony, and put it in Master B or in Discord so we can see what you're talking about? It's good oh, footage. Yeah, sure. Very interesting. What I'll do is I'll, I'll take a picture of this one here. Uh, let's see if we can do this. All right, I'll have to wait for the text to go off. I mean, is it not? Is it not something that's connected to a geometric horizon? The whole looming thing. That, this looks like a, a bit of towering, and then other it land is just further back. Stuff, huh? Yes, that's correct. Their descriptions are in reference to a geometric horizon. That's their starting point. That's correct. Would that not make looming impossible? If you're going to describe well, looming the horizon, happens to objects. Describing the horizon looming above the horizon, then yeah. It doesn't. It's non sequitur in the description of looming, but if you're going to describe this mass of land looming above the horizon, it's completely conducive with their description of what looming is. Can I please attempt to basically redefine it carefully? Look, I think that the horizon is basically apparent effects and there's all kinds of influences so there may be even more multiple potential apparent horizons because of complex situations out there but one thing is for sure a apparent horizon could never loom over a geometric horizon because that apparent is horizons redundant up, but what, you would actually what, need what a geometric horizon. Out there, but just saying that what kind of sites are out there, yeah, it may be a little bit more complicated, but you know, it, it can't loom over a physical obstruction. That's really the argument. W which they don't have. It's exactly. not sequitur, correct, Darwin. But as Quantum Eraser dropped in, in in the middle of that, that this apparent horizon, this extra horizon, the second horizon they describe, apparent horizon, is non sequitur. It's all horizons, including their geometric horizon, which they do have in their model, that is also apparent. By its definition, it's apparent based on height. <clears throat> John, it's in the live stream chat on Discord. Uh, I, would, I would disagree that that's Leomi. Sorry. Fair enough. I mean, from the point of view of the argument in regards to the black swan, it, it again, it matters not. Because the argument is in regards to the physical geometric horizon a sphere edge would offer if we were on a sphere. Now, their description of what happens in regards to looming isn't conducive. It doesn't sit with the actual explanation for their looming, moving with respect to the horizon. So regardless of what we define this image or the video that Anthony's just presented as it doesn't change the argument for the black swan still it you could argue it supports it so this horizon above this below horizon we used to argue was the physical geometric horizon is a new horizon so therefore the horizon's not a physical geometric edge of a sphere then so it doesn't you know it could be argued to support the argument and then you can go into what it actually is 
Look, we just know the only what thing it's I not. Say about it is, sorry, is, I, I, just add, I just thought that's the end. We just know what it's not. This horizon, in some ways, supports the argument that it's not a physical <laughs> geometric edge of a sphere. So this assists in saying what the horizon is not, if nothing else. No, no, that is no. What, what you're saying about that, about that there is correct. I have no, absolutely no issue with that. They are it's just looming. If we didn't have a globe model, then looming wouldn't be one of five effects. Looming is the only effect that we cannot get any kind of proof for, because it's based. Looming is based on their radius. So looming for for me anyway, looming is a completely made up thing, like gravity. It's not real. No, Which it's would not. be funny, right? Because they show. were told. Sorry. I defined looming on my show and had plenty of examples. And I would, I think you'll agree, QE, that the picture you've just been sent is conducive to your definition of what looming would be. Yes. Yeah, I'd agree. I think this is looming. I think Anthony was right the first time. I think he's right now. Their description or any description of looming is what you have. Now, what QE did was give you a, a description of the effect that didn't, like you're describing, Brian, require the presupposition of a geometric horizon in the description. Their looming absolutely has a geometric horizon in their description. QE didn't do that. He described it with respect to the apparent horizon, which is what we have. I don't think you even used... What word did you use for horizon, or did you just correctly say horizon? Huey. I think he just said horizon. Not sure. More likely than not. Sorry, I had to step away for a second. Somebody asked me something. When you describe the horizon and the reflection of the sky creating a false horizon below, the horizon's just being described as the horizon, correct? Not apparent, not geometric, just the horizon in your description. There is a false horizon, right? But you can see the horizon in the photos that I uh, shown on the show. I I'm trying to look at Anthony's um, photo here. It's not very clear to me. I know, I know the photographs that QE is talking about uh, from the presentation. Yeah, I, I had them in a presentation on Ranty's because that's when you look for, for looming on Google, that's what they give you. It's like it appears that the horizon is somewhere that it's not. The real horizon is actually behind the sailboat on the ship. Um, <clears throat> no, uh, my argument, maybe I didn't define it correctly. I, I, I obviously didn't. Is that their version of looming, of what they call looming, is an impossibility. Yeah, that's their, their definition is false. But if you're going to argue with them, you got to argue within their paradigm, right? Yes. yes. Yep. <sighs> Sorry. Yeah, I'll have to watch Anthony's video because I'm not getting a whole bunch from this photo. I just think there's a whole lot of miraging and like complex, well, you could almost say like fractal, like mirror. There's a whole hull of mirrors going on over there. But yeah, doesn't make any, any difference though, you know, the where the geometrical horizon must be in sight at all times, according to the globe model. That's still that's still there. It's still not there in the image. So, yeah, the black swan stands. It doesn't really matter in the end. But it is fascinating to just look at what optics really can do out there. It's how it works, how incredibly complicated it can get. The top line, is that land? No, the top line is looming. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one that's just below, this is not the location of, this is not the location for this horizon. See, see how it 
from right to left. <laughs> it's sort of this uh, is not the horizon you're looking for. Move along. Yeah, I'll have to watch the video because I was going to say, not, if you want to check out the video, it's a lot more clear what's going on when you watch it as a video rather than as a still. But maybe it'll right. get some comment on the next show because I'm going to round out this show now. Unless anybody anybody else has got anything to add? Four more hours. No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> Yeah, great show, Nathan. Four more seconds. With that, I'll say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who did tune in on the Nathan Oakley 1980 premiering stream for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, joining, and all that good stuff. Also, a massive thank you to all of today's Discord and G Plus panels for making this after show possible. Be sure to subscribe to Nathan Oakley channel, link below, if you want to check out the weekend Flat Earth Debate live show or Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!